On Wednesday, September 1st, the Ontario Science Advisory Table announced that their modelling is predicting a substantial fourth wave and that in order to avoid another lockdown this fall, over 85% of Ontarians need to get vaccinated. So where's Toronto at? 78.8% of eligible Torontonians are fully vaccinated, 67% in the annex, according to data from Toronto Public Health. Since August 20th, Toronto Public Health has been bringing doses directly to the 20% of Torontonians who remain unvaccinated. Why aren't they vaccinated yet? I asked some vaccine hesitant Annex residents and then asked Dr. Harvey Kaplovich, an Annex based family doctor for 48 years, to respond. Hello, I'm Dr. Harvey Kaplovich. I've been practicing in the Annex for 48 years as a family physician. I practice obstetrics, uh, pediatrics, adult medicine, geriatrics, and I'm associated with Mount Sinai Hospital and with a group at Humber River Hospital. Because I can't take it unless I'm sure if it's safe or not. So all we need is just proof that the vaccine is safe. Uh, good question. Uh, we have so much evidence now that it is safe. Uh, like anything else, there's always possible side effects. Uh, the majority, majority, majority of people are okay. Uh, they tolerate the medication very well. And in addition, they have good vaccination immunity. But without us knowing what it's, what it's gonna do to the body or where it's coming from, there is no point of taking it because I'm not injecting something I've never seen or heard of in my body for no reason. We give uh, medication, we give vaccinations, immunizations, for many different things. Uh, you might not understand what is going into your body, but certainly the scientists do. Uh, they've done lots and lots of research, and especially these mRNA virus vaccinations are not something very new. They've been uh, investigated upon for years already, uh, back with SARS, and uh, we do know that it does develop good immunity. It develops good neutralizing antibodies, you're able to fight COVID, and that's the most important thing with these vaccinations. For family members who are vaccine hesitant, what should we do to help encourage them to get the vaccine in order to protect our family and our community? Well, the fact that you got the vaccine, great, kudos to you. I think uh, you can have discussion, but if the, she has discussion or any family member has a discussion with a professional, or somebody who knows and understands what these vaccinations are about, uh, that probably would be the most important advice you can give him or her. I think uh, to get solid evidence and to get objectivity is most important. So encourage them to speak to a professional. Well, my question or concern about the vaccine is, I don't know why I should get it. I don't see the reason to do that. And since I don't have to travel or go anywhere that actually requires the vaccine? Good question. I think that I do know that a lot of people are, are asymptomatic carriers and I'm so happy for them that they didn't become quite ill to require hospitalization. But two things for sure are going to be promised as much as possible if you get the vaccination. Number one, you will, you will not land up in hospital. It'll give you that protection. And number two is you will not land up in an ICU on a ventilator, as I'm sure you've heard many other people have landed up with. Um, so I think it's a good idea. Um, I would get it. I think that we have lots of evidence. Uh, there's no downside as far as I'm concerned. I think uh, we have to think about the personal protection and about society protection. And if we do that, I think we'll be able to handle this virus nicely. And I do believe I still have the, a level of immunity from getting it. So there are many diseases where we have to have re-vaccination even though you've had the disease. We do know that objectively people who've had COVID have their antibody levels go down and the vaccinations give them a higher immunity, higher neutralizing antibodies, so they last much longer and are much more protective. So even if somebody, for example, has been in an ICU with significant COVID disease, one month after their process, after they're recuperating, we still suggest that they get 
the vaccination for COVID. What about the side effects? Like, I guess um, also I'm not getting because I don't want to. I don't want to get like sick even for one day just from getting the vaccine because there's no need. Like people I know, her, another friend, they all got it and they felt like shit the next day. So <laughs> I don't really want to lose that like one or two days just because because of the vaccine. Yeah, that's that's another one. Absolutely true. But understand again, studies are objectively showing that those people who have vaccinations and who get a little bit of tenderness pain in their arm, they might develop a uh, lymph node under their arm, their axilla. They might have a little bit of fever. They might feel very achy, tired. They want to go to sleep for a day or two. It's those people that are mounting really good antibody response. In fact, I've seen people who after the first shot would say, Doc, I felt fine. What was it? What's the big deal? What's everybody making such a large commotion with it? And then they get the next shot, the reinforcing one, and they say, whoa, now I feel it. I feel that achiness, that somnolence. I want to just rest for a day or two. But that's okay. That's good. In fact, I look forward to that because it means for me that their antibody response has been quite dramatic and they have probably much better protection than otherwise. If you're vaccine hesitant, I would suggest again to speak to professional. Yes, there are side effects, but honestly, I think there are side effects for many different things. We're always very smart retrospectively to make the best decision possible prospectively. And um, there is nothing one can do that doesn't have side effects. Have you ever heard of anybody going across the street getting hit by a car? I can't believe you go across the street. How can you go across the street? You can get hit by a car. The point is that anything is possible, but when you look at it in its contextual basis, when you look at it globally, it makes sense. You are giving protection. I would suggest highly, highly, again, to speak to a professional to get some objectivity. Um, I would not look at the blogs and I would not look at the, uh, the uh, anecdotal stories you hear. I would look at, at the science and it's a good idea. For those people who get the vaccinations, they do have protection, they do not land up in hospital, they do do a service for themselves and for society. There are 33 COVID hospitalizations in Toronto and 98.7% of those hospitalized since May 1st were not fully vaccinated, according to a mid-August Toronto Public Health report. Vaccinated people have greater protection against the virus than the unvaccinated, including against the Delta variant, according to an emailed statement to me from Dr. Vanita Dubey, Toronto's Associate Medical Officer of Health. By reducing the quantity of virus circulating, vaccines remain our best protection, Dr. Dubey explained. So as we head into the fall, pop-up clinics, vaccine mandates, a probable rise in hospitalizations and infections in children will likely see more Torontonians getting their shot. Vaccination is our best chance of avoiding a pandemic of the unvaccinated. If you have questions about COVID-19, please call the Toronto Public Health Hotline at 416-338-7600. They're open from 8.30 in the morning until 8 at night. That's 416-338-7600. This is Nicole Stoffman reporting for the Annex Gleaner.